morning, Peter Rossi here, Foundation Expo 88 YouTube channel. It is Sunday the 27th of September um, 2020 and we are here today to talk about the Girl Guides mural or the Friendship mural from Expo 88. So, I need to give thanks to Dr Denise Whitehouse for giving me the motivation to continue to do the research in relation to John Truscott because it was John Truscott's visionary genius that saw um, the mural concept of the Barrier Reef come into fruition that then gave life to an otherwise dreary entrance into Expo 88 and also gave activity because there was girl guides basically constantly monitoring um, or manning that site uh, and it gave life and activity uh, to what would have otherwise been um, slightly a dead corner to Expo 88. But there was a bit of a fatal flaw. When the design was conceptualised, there was about 30 metres of mural that Ken Cato painted, painted and put up. Now, to cover that 30 odd metres would require the sale of 350,000 odd individual tiles. Four months into Expo, not even a tenth of that was sold. The last two months, um, approximately about 20,000 individual tiles were sold, but it was a long way short. And so at the end of Expo, where the mural was meant to go on permanent display in the redeveloped Expo site, that never come to fruition because the mural wasn't anywhere near complete. Um, and the artwork that Ken Cato did was was a very quick piece of artwork. It was done on masonite, so the paint basically was disappearing uh, into the masonite, because masonite's very porous and it will suck up the paint. I've repainted this this morning, and you might think, well, that doesn't match. Um, well, that is the colour that matched what was behind the tiles. And so what the process was, was that when it first started out, these acrylic tiles were being cut and formed to follow the line uh, and that was very time consuming and Sir Lou saw the volunteers struggling at the end of the day to make their mural work and so he gave instructions that no, we will just do it in a shortcut fashion thinking that um, you know, having something that was complete was better than having nothing that was complete uh, but even that the, the fatal flaw was was that there was nowhere near enough sold to enable a mural that was in a condition that could be displayed in the original concept that John Truscott came up with. Um, but you know, I can understand the angst sitting in uh, Girl Guides and Guides Queensland over the fact that the mural wasn't put on display. They got it back. They have they kept it. For, uh, for 30 odd years, uh, but it's been through floods. So half of the tiled areas that they did have was lost because once masonite is subject to um, water uh, inundation for an extended period of time, it just dissolves. It just becomes putty basically. And so only half of the mural that was created is actually still in existence. Luckily, there are two lots of panels. This half panel gives a good feel of the Expo Authority. The other panel that is outside um, gives a real great feel of all the restaurants and some other pavilions on site. And then there are 10 panels which really give a good con idea of all the visitors and the messages that they were leaving behind. Uh, so Greg Riddell, I'm hoping that this now starts to look uh, more acceptable and presentable to the Caboolture Historical Village. I really do see, think there is a great potential here in, in restoring this uh, and putting it on display. Um, Dr. Denise Whitehouse, thank you for giving me the motivation and to the archivist um, at Guides Queensland, thank you for providing so much information. It's really been very helpful. Thank you and good morning.